be our prayer this afternoon. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away I give myself Father God, as we go into your word, I pray that your word will bring life. I pray that your word will bring healing. I pray that your word will bring deliverance. It will bring salvation. It will bring hope. I pray that your word will deliver and bring restoration and peace into your li in the lives of your people. Daddy, I ask that you will do what your people need today. That you will supply, that you will answer, that you will, Father God, hear both the spoken and the unspoken word. Hear the hearts, hear the minds, hear the thoughts, hear the emotions of your people. And Daddy, answer them today through your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus amen and amen and the church say amen. amen hallelujah let's get ready to go into the word of god i want to encourage you to grab something to write with something to record with something to make notes with because we're going to be going through a lot of things this afternoon thank you woman of god thank you god bless you today i want to speak on the topic on the title it's in my hands it's in my where I want you to put your hands out in front of you. Look at your hands, those big hands, those lined hands, those small hands, whatever hands you have. It's a gift from God. Just look, you know, look at the outlines of your hands. Look at them well. If I use the lapel mic, will it be okay? Okay. Okay, I'll just keep going. It's in my where? Hands. There is something in your hands that I want to share with us today that I'm hoping, you know, is going to, God is going to release into our midst. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, everyone is looking for solutions to life's problems, right? We're all looking for solutions. Some people are turning to tarot cards, horoscopes. Some people are turning to so many different ways looking for solutions. We're looking for how to get out of debt, how to move forward in life. Some people are looking for how to find a spouse, how to get married. Some people are looking for how to have a successful marriage. Some people are looking for how to have, you know, looking for answers to their exams. They've got exams coming up and they don't know if they're going to do well or not. Some people are looking for solutions. Should I take that job? Should I not take that job? Some people are looking for answers to, you know, on how to raise their children, how to get the promotion at work. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are all looking for one answer or the other. Amen? There's nobody here that's not looking for an answer to something in life. Amen? I need you to talk to me so that I know that we're all in this together. Amen? Yeah, come on. We can do better than that. Amen? Yes. Amen means I agree. So if you agree with me on something, please shout a resounding amen. 
it'll make you know it will encourage me that I'm on the right track in search of solutions in search of answers people have left their homes People have left their families because they think the grass is greener on the other side. People have left their communities. Some people have even relocated, left their countries. Some people have left their church. They've left their jobs because of what they are looking for. Because of what? What they are looking for. Do you know that some people have traveled the world in search of inner peace? Some people have traveled the world looking for healing. Some people have traveled the world looking for self-discovery. I want to know who I am. I want to know what my purpose in life is. We had the youth meeting last night. And one of the questions that the youth were asking is, what is my purpose in life? And I just want to digress for a minute. One of the girls there, she blew my mind away. She said, that, you know, I said, you know, does anybody want to answer the question, what is our purpose in life? And she said, the, our purpose in life is just obeying everything God tells you to do. Isn't that what the purpose is? Just obeying everything that God tells you to do. If God tells you to go right, go right. It will lead to purpose. If God says sit, sit. Being obedient to God's will, God's instruction is our purpose in life. It's not, and you know, she said, it's not about, you know, preaching or, or, or doing something, you know, something big and magnificent. It's just being obedient. And I said to her, would you like to preach tomorrow? And then she panicked and then she was like, no. <laughs> but she really, you know, she blew me away with that answer because... You know, when I, when I answer that question, I'm always talking about, you know, to find your purpose in life is you got, you know, you know, you got to pray, you got to fast, read the word of God, you got to do this and you got to do that. And she just simplified it. Do everything God tells you. That's your purpose in life. Today, there is nothing human beings will not do. No distance people will not travel to find purpose, to know who they are to get answers to their problems, to get results, amen? You know, in Nigeria, you know, people would go to the mountains to pray, believing that if they go to the mountains, that is where God will answer their prayers, you know? Some people believe if you drink a certain holy water, trust me, I've had that tried on me. You need to drink this water from Jerusalem you need to anoint yourself with this special anointing that I got from Israel. You need to go and you need to travel to you know, Israel, yeah, Jerusalem, and go and, and, and bath in the River Jordan. That is where God will show up and give you the answers you are looking for. Now, please, I have no doubt God can use any means. He can use any methods. He can use any place to answer people if their heart is right with him amen if their heart is right the Israelites cried unto God for deliverance from Pharaoh and from Egypt and God heard their cries after 400 years and God answered them the answer was who Moses the answer was Moses turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter 3 Exodus chapter 3, if you can let me bring it up on the screen, that would be great. The answer to the Israelites' cry unto God for 400 years was a man called Moses. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 3 that God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and told him to go and deliver the Israelites from Egypt. But Moses felt unqualified. Moses felt, Moses was fearful because... In his previous life, before running away, he was an Egyptian, raised in the Egyptian household. When he discovered that, oh my God, yes, I am really an Israelite, he decided to take matters into his own hands. And he, in his effort, in his own ability to try and be the deliverer and help out the Israelites, he killed an Egyptian. And when Pharaoh heard about it, Pharaoh says, I'm going to kill you. And because of that, Moses did a runner. Moses ran and he ran away for 40 years hiding 
working with Jethro and married one of the daughters and had children and came out of the limelight, disappeared. But God came to him in, in, in Exodus chapter 3. And God said to Moses, I want to use you to deliver the Israelites. They've been crying out to me for 400 years. You are the man that is going to do it. And my, Moses was like, oh, who am I to do this? I'm not qualified. I don't even know how to speak. I, I have a stuttering issue. I don't know what, is, you know, they're going to kill me if they find out if I go back. I've been on the run for 40 years. I've been a fugitive, you know, for killing a soldier. Now you want to you wanna send me back to the same place that I'm trying to stay away from. How many of you know that God will sometimes send you to the same place you're trying to get away from? Because he's trying to deal with what you're trying to get away from. Amen. Moses said, I can't do it. I can't go back. I can't face the fear. I, I just can't do it. But God said, Moses, you're going to have to face the people you fear in order to bring deliverance. You see, we can be hiding for 40 years, but one day we will all have to face the past in order for us to move forward. Amen. Everyone's going to have to deal with their past one day. It's going to come up. You know, just, just try going into politics. A politician is fine. Some, you know, you, you, you are okay until you decide to run for, um, for a public office. Then things that you did in elementary school, they'll start bringing up. Things that you did in kindergarten, somebody will take the time to go and dig up and use against you. And then you're going to have to deal with it in order for you to do what? move forward that's why you you know you get the politicians come behind the podium and says i apologize for what i did 30 years ago seriously how many of you remembered what you did 30 years ago your past will always catch up with you you have to be prepared one day to deal with it amen Moses said he had nothing to he had nothing in him to deliver the people he had nothing in him to be a leader he was a stutterer he was weak he was a failure he was a fugitive he had no qualifications I can't do it I have no experience of leadership I have no knowledge I have no resources how in the world was I supposed to do what you're asking me to do if I have nothing in me to do it with Moses says how can I do this I have nothing how many of us can identify with Moses God has given you an assignment that you don't feel qualified to handle your company has given you a position that you been although you've been praying and asking for it when you finally get it you feel inadequate you feel you're not ready you have a project you or you're given an opportunity to make a presentation but you're not prepared for it. You don't have the knowledge. You've been placed in a position that you know you don't have the necessary resources or the manpower to succeed in it. All odds are against you. What do you do? This is where many of us start to look for solutions. We start to look at other people outside, all around and everywhere. We have to go, we, you know, we think if we go to the mountain, we think if I go and see this prophet, we think if I do this, if I do that, that's going to help me. That's going to give me the solution, the answer that I need. We look to others to provide the answers, the means, the solutions. But God said to Moses, open up Exodus chapter 4, verse 2 to 5 for me. Exodus chapter 4, verse 2 to 5. God said to Moses, then the Lord said to him, Moses, what is that in your hand? Exodus chapter 4, verse 2 to 5. What is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? Moses said, it's a staff. The Lord said to him in verse 3 of Exodus chapter 4, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. 
Then the Lord said to him in verse 4, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. I'm not even doing that, please. You want me to pick up a snake? Are you for real? I am not doing anything like that. Moses, pick up, you know, reach out your hand and take it by the, by the tail. And so Moses, in obedience to God, reached out his hand. I'm sure he was very scared about it. And he picked up the snake. And Bible says, and it turned back into a staff. It, be it became a rod again in his hand. Then verse 5 says, this said the Lord is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Do you know that Moses felt he had nothing to step into the role and the position God was calling him to? Moses looked at himself and through the lenses of fear, he saw nothing until God pointed it out to him. Through the lens of the past experiences, Moses saw nothing. He didn't believe God until God showed it to him. There is more to you, Moses. There is more to you than what you see, than what others see about you. There is something in you that you have that life has blinded you from seeing. Right? There is something in you that you have that life has blinded you from seeing because of your past failures. Amen? Because of, your, of the hurts of the past. Because of the disappointments of the past. Because of the rejection you felt. You've experienced and the fear. I want to tell somebody today, listen to me. Low self-esteem is a blindfold. Low self-esteem is what? Low self-esteem is a blindfold. It will not let you see anything. It will not let you see anything. Self-doubt and lack of self-confidence will keep you blinded for as long as you stay there and keep the blindfolds on. Am I making sense to somebody today? No matter how big the solution is in plain sight, if you are blinded by low self-esteem, if you are blinded by low confidence, if you are blinded by self-doubt, you will never see anything. You will never see it. Amen? You will never see it. Moses could not see beyond his fear and his low self-esteem. And so God had to give him a right-hand man. God gave him his brother Aaron to help him and to be his spokesperson. Can I tell you that Moses had something in him that he did not know was there. He had something in his hand that was powerful. But he didn't know because he was blinded. He was what? Blinded. He was blinded. If you go to Exodus chapter 14 for me. Chapter 14 verse 15 to 16. God again spoke to Moses. In Exodus chapter 14 verse 15 to 16. God again spoke to Moses after the Israelites had left Egypt. And they were now faced with a Red Sea in front of them. But you know that the Red Sea was intentional by God. The Red Sea was intentional by God. The Bible says, go back to um, chapter 13 for me, from verse 17 to 18. That is a very key verse. Exodus 13, 17 to 18. The Bible says that when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 to 18. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So in verse 18, what did God do? God led the people around the desert road towards where? The Red Sea. God purposely led them to, you know, towards the Red Sea. But God didn't just lead them towards danger without preparing them. 
The Bible says that God led them by the desert road towards the Red Sea. And then it says the Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. Out of Egypt ready for battle. If God was going to lead them towards the Red Sea but, and he prepared them. Can you, can you go to NIV version for me? He did what? He prepared them. Can I tell you something that God intentionally led the people towards the, sea, the Red Sea? He did not lead them that way empty handed. He led them armed for battle. He led them towards a dead end armed for battle. Sometimes you think, well, God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why did you allow this to happen to my family? Sometimes God will allow things to happen to you, but guess what? He prepares you for it. He always prepares his people for every stages of life. You just need to recognize it. You just need to see it. God never leads you anywhere that he has not equipped you for. God never takes you on a journey that he has not prepared you for. God never calls you to do something, lead you somewhere, or ask you to do anything without putting the means of doing it in your hands. Don't think God's just going to call you and, and throw you into the deep end. We all know this saying, for every vision there is what? Come on, for every vision there is what? For every vision, God makes what? God gives you provision. For every journey, God gives you provision. God arms you. Unfortunately, the Israelites did not see that. Moses, their leader, did not see it either. So now if you go to Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 for me. Exodus chapter 14, verse 10, it says, As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were Egyptians marching after them. And they were terrified and cried out to the Lord. As Pharaoh approached them towards the Red Sea, don't forget God has already equipped them for that battle. As, they appro as, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and they were and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and they cried out unto the Lord. Go to, they, go to verse 15 for me. They cried out unto the Lord. Go to verse 15 of the same chapter, verse 15. I hope somebody's following me in their Bible. Then the Lord said to Moses, as the, as the people cried unto God, unto Moses and unto God, Moses turned his face to, you know, towards God. And God said to Moses, why in the world are you crying out to me? Did, you, did I not tell you that I would not lead you without equipping you? You left Egypt armed for battle. I purposely led you through the Red Sea, to, towards the Red Sea. Now you're at the Red Sea. Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to do what? Tell the Israelites to do what? Move forward towards the danger. Move forward towards the Red Sea. Move forward towards the roadblock. Move forward towards that dead end. Go to verse 16 for me. I will never tell you to do something that I haven't made a way for you. Raise your staff. This is the same staff that God told Moses to use in front of Pharaoh. God says, raise your staff. Stretch out what? Your hand over the sea. Divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry lands. Ladies and gentlemen, what is in your hand? There is something in your hand that can part a Red Sea. There is something in your hand that can bring deliverance to a nation. You're not just here. This church believes you're not an accident waiting to happen. But what? Destiny. A destiny being fulfilled because God has armed you for destiny. There is something inside of you. There is something in your hand that can bring salvation to people. You just may not see it because you do. Just my hands. I need, I need to do my manicure. 
you know? To you, it's just your hands. But in those hands are the keys for somebody's deliverance. Am I speaking to anybody here today? It says, raise your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea, divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry, on dry ground. Verse 21. Go to verse 21 for me. Verse 21. The Bible then says, then Moses did what? Come on, church. Moses did what? Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands forward. Stretch out your hand. You see, God is not going to come down and do anything. He's going to use those same hands. He's going to use these same hands. God did not come down to, you know, to the Israelites. He sent a man that had hands. And he said to him, stretch out those hands. And Moses, in obedience, stretched out his hands over the sea. And that night, what did God do in answer to Moses stretching out his hands? God used those hands and God parted the Red Sea. When you obey God and use what God has put in your hand, he can work miracles through you. Amen? When you, all you have to do is stretch out your hand. All you have to do is play the keyboard. All you have to do is play the drums. All you have to do is lay hands on the sick and they will do what? It's not you. There's nothing in these hands. But when you stretch it out on somebody, the power of God transfers from you onto that person. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into what? dry lands. The waters were divided. One man stretched forth his hands. A whole nation was delivered. On. One man obeyed God and stretched forth his hands. And an entire sea was parted. Who says you need an army to do the work of the ministry? Who says you need a majority for God to work through you? All you need is one man. Come on, how many do you need? One person that will stretch out their hand. That will obey God. And through that one man, one man, Jesus, came and died for everybody. Today, millions of lives are being changed. One man, Elijah, called fire from heaven. And what happened? Deliverance came. Do I have one man in this house? Do I have one person that will say, here's my hands, Lord. I'm stretching it out. I'm stretching it out for you to use. The solution to the Red Sea was in Moses' hands, but he didn't realize it. God had said to him from the beginning, I will be with you. I will work through you. In Exodus chapter 4, if you go to verse 17 for me, it says, take this staff in your hand so you can perform miraculous signs with it. God told him in Exodus 4 verse 17, take this staff and through this stick, I'm going to perform miracles for you. I'm going to perform miracles through you. Church, I'm here to tell somebody watching me online, for those of us here, the solution you are looking for is not on the mountaintop. Does anybody hear me? You don't need to leave your home and travel all the thousands of miles to go and seek God in Banff on the mountain. God is right here. You don't need to go to Africa and go to the mountains in Africa. I see all those videos people send. They're going to the mountain to pray. You can pray in your bathroom. God is still there. Let's break out of religion. God is everywhere. Bible says, Lo, I will be with you always. Wherever you are, God is there. You don't need to go to a special place to find God. You don't need to drink holy water. You don't need to go and bathe in River Jordan. You don't need a special anointing. You don't even need to have somebody lay hands on you. 
for God to use your hands. Amen? The answer you're looking for, the solution you're looking for is where? In your hands. Let's stretch for those hands again. It's where? It's in these hands, these ten fingers, for goodness sake. You know, you're like, oh. You look at your hands, and if you're like me, you're like, my God, you know. These nails, I need to get a mannequin, I need to do some stuff to it. You look at your hands, and you dismiss them. But can I tell you that those hands, when you surrender them to, when you surrender them to God, they become weapons of mass destruction to the enemy. Simple hands, there's nothing to it. It's just the power of God coming upon you. And your hands can become weapons of mass destruction to pull down their strongholds, to deliver, to destroy the enemy. Amen? The staff is in your hand. The, loose, the solution to crossing the Red Sea is in your hands. The answer to the riddle, to the question, what is my purpose, is in your hands. The power you need is within you. What you have can get you to the other side of the Red Sea. What you have on the inside of you can get you to the other side, ladies and gentlemen. The enemy has been lying to us for so long that you need this and you need that for you to have breakthrough. Your breakthrough is in your hands. God has done his part. He's anointed you. Now all you have to do is rise up, Moses. Rise up. Stretch forth your hand. And see what I would do through it. Somebody says, my hands are blessed. Oh my God, you don't mean it. My hands are blessed. My hands hold the keys. My hands contain the miracles. In my hands are the power for transition. In my hands hold the power for change. You see, you can leave your job. You can leave your marriage. You can leave your church. You can leave your country. But can I tell you something? You will never find what you are looking for outside because the answer is on the inside. You will never find the solution outside because the answer is what? On the inside of you. I love the Wizard of Oz. In the Wizard of Oz, you know, many of you may not know it. How many of you know the Wizard of Oz? You've seen the movie. For those of you that don't know it, let me tell you. So the scarecrow, the, the, the tin man, the lion, and Dorothy, they were all on their way to Emerald City looking for something. Each one was looking for something. The scarecrow was looking for a brain so that he could be smart. The tin man was looking for a heart. And the lion was looking for courage. And Dorothy was just looking for a way to get back home to her aunt and to her uncle. And so they thought that by going, traveling all the way to the Emerald City, they would find the solution. The scarecrow will find, uh, you know, he would find the brain. The tin man will find a heart. Um, the lion will find courage. And Dorothy will find the way home. But when they got to the Emerald, you know, when they got to Emerald City, and they met with the fairy godmother. She said to them, Scarecrow, you already have a brain. Tin man, you already have a heart. Lion, you are already courageous. And Dorothy, the ability to get home is already within you. See, what they thought they had to travel thousands of miles to go and find was where? It was with them. They just couldn't see it. It was with them all along. They just didn't realize it. See, what you are looking, going everywhere searching for, what you're going all over the place looking for is right there with you. And his name is Jesus. Come on, yes. Come on. His name is Jesus. I'll be honest with you, I'm just as guilty. I remember a few weeks ago, I was so down, I was so depressed, I was so discouraged. And I was calling, and I called one of my friends, 
And I said, do you know, is there a prophet that I can speak to, that I can just get an answer from? Because I just want to know what's going on. And she gave me a prophet's contact. And I called this prophet and I said, can you tell me what's going on? Because I think God's not listening to me. God's not answering me. And the man of God says, there's nothing wrong with you. You just need to go spend more time in prayer. I said, that was it? He said, you just need to spend more time in prayer, connecting with God. I'm like, well, that can't be that easy. There must be something that I need to do. There must be, you know, we all feel that it has to be hard for it to make sense. But sometimes all we just need to do is the simple things. For, for get rid of the distractions and just spend more time with God. And just spend more time in the presence of God. Amen. Some of you think you have no solutions where you are. And that you need to leave to find the answer. Guess what? You will still come back home. Because like Dorothy said, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And home is a heart with God. Your home is where? It's with your heart. A right heart with God. If you have a right heart with God, God will speak. God will speak. Home is home. Is the home is your heart where God dwells. Where God dwells. You don't need to do somersaults for God to use you. For you to hear from God. For you to find the answers and the solutions. Like I said, it's within you. It's in these ten fingers. It's in these hands that God will use to do. That God will give you the solution. Let me quickly tell you the story in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Hallelujah. If you can turn to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7 for me. We read about the widow who came crying to Elijah for help. She came crying to Elijah for help because fear had made her believe she had no solutions, man of God. There was nothing in her home or in her hands that could get her out of debt and save her family. And then if you go to verse 2 of 2 Kings chapter 4, Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your hands? The widow said, what did she say? She said, I have nothing in my hands. There's nothing in me. I don't have any experience. I don't have any qualifications. I don't have the people. I don't have the finances. I don't have anything except this little thing. Except. That word except belittled what God had put in, on the inside of her. The widow with all, she had the breakthrough in her hands, but she didn't know it. She did not know it. And so many of us are just like her. We're just like her. We're just like her. I have nothing. I have nobody. I have nothing. Working, nothing is working for me. How am I supposed to do this? What did Elisha say to her? What did Elisha say to her? Elisha said to her, go borrow. Go borrow. Go borrow. Go borrow jars. Go borrow jars. And I'm going to turn that little thing that you think is, is, is insignificant. I'm going to turn that little thing that you thought, that you belittle, that you like, oh, yeah, it's just, it's just this, it's just that. I'm going to use it to save you and to deliver you. You see, what we discount, God will use God will do what? He will use it. There is nothing except about you. There is nothing except about you. You cannot look at your life and say, I have nothing at all. Because that just nullifies the blood of Jesus. 
You can never look in the mirror and say, I am nothing. I have nothing. I can't do anything. Because God, as Jesus Christ, gave you all powers when he was going to leave the earth. His all powers and authority have been given unto me. I'm giving it to you. So when somebody says, I have nothing, I am nothing, I can't do anything. What you're basically saying is that God did not equip me with anything. I want to give you one more story. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 21, we read about Jesus feeding the 5,000. It says in Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Verse 15, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and, we're already get, and it's already getting late. Send the crowd away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves food. Verse 16 of Matthew chapter 14, Jesus said to them, in verse 16, Jesus replies, do not, you, they do not need to go anywhere. You give them something to eat. Hold on a minute. How, you want me to feed all these thousands of people? I have nothing except, I'm nothing except. And then go to verse 17, the key verse. It says in verse 17, remember the widow? I have nothing except. The disciple says, we have nothing except here. Only five loaves of bread and two fish. How is that going to feed um, you know, thousands of people? There is nothing in our hands to deliver these people. There is nothing in our hand except five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus says, bring it. He prayed over it and blessed it. And guess what? Over 5,000 people were fed. Over 5,000 men in verse 21, over 5,000 men were fed, not counting the women, not counting the children. So when you count the women and you count the children, let's just multiply that by three. But with what? Five loaves of bread and two fish. The little that you think is insignificant fed thousands of people. The little that you think, you know, that you have parted the Red Sea, delivered people. The widow thought, I only have a little bit of oil. But that little bit of oil, when Jesus got involved with it, when God showed up, he multiplied it and she was able to get out of debt. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, where am I going? The solution is in your hands, for goodness sake. There are answers in your hands that if you just take the blindfold off and stop looking at yourself through fear, through self-doubt, through low confidence and start to rise up in who you are in Christ Jesus, you will begin to see what God can do through you. Am I talking to anybody here today? Remove the blindfold of fear and doubt and you will see where God will take you. Can I tell you that the key, that your hands in your hands are the keys to somebody's breakthrough. You can feed 5,000 people. You can bring satisfaction to people. You can even have leftovers. Somebody here has the keys to somebody's promotion. Somebody here has the answer for somebody else's acceleration. It's in your hands. Play softly for me. Please open your hands. Let's look at your hands. Sister Bissy, what is in your hands that like God has given you? Ben, what has God placed in your hand that can make a difference? Abigail, what has God put in your hands that can change lives? What has God put in your hands? There is something in you. There is something in you. God didn't just create you with nothing. There's an ability inside of you. There is a power inside of you. Without Moses, the Israelites would not have left Egypt. He had the deliverance of a whole nation in his hands, for goodness sake. Without the empty jar that the widow had and the little bit of oil and then going 
out and borrowing more oil, more, more jars, she would not have gotten out of debt. It is inside of you. Without the little boy's five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus would not have been able to feed over 15,000 people. There is something in you that God can use to deliver a nation. What is in your hands, church? In your hands are talents, in your hands are skills, in your hands are abilities, in your hands are the opportunities to change your life. The Bible says we shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Through you, God can cast out demons, God can raise the dead, and God can restore souls. Don't despise what you have, the little that you have. Don't despise where you live. Don't despise your community. Don't despise your church. Don't despise anything God has put in your God has put in your in your path. Don't despise it. Don't look down to yourself and think, I have nothing except. Don't look at others and think they are better than you. Don't think others are more qualified than you. Others are more experienced than you. So God should use them. Can I tell you something? That Moses despised who he was, what he had, and the qualities. But praise be to God for his mercies, his second chance. Mercy overlooked Moses' lack of self-confidence. Mercy overlooked his, self, his low self-esteem. Mercy overlooked his self-sabotage. And mercy used him. Can I tell you that even when you don't qualify, God will qualify you. Amen. The Bible says his strength is perfected in your weaknesses. Man of God, Moses disqualified the rod in his hand. It's just a stick I picked up on the street. But the rod was a talent. The rod is a skill. The rod in your hand is an ability. The rod in your hand is knowledge. Do you know that the rod in your hand are resources? The rod in your hand and the ability to connect people. The rod in your hand are information that others are looking for to get them going in life. The rod in your hand are network opportunities. There is a rod in everybody's hands. There is five loaves and two fish in everybody's hand. There is a little bit of jar, a little bit of oil in everybody that can help somebody else. I can help somebody else in life, right? Yeah? Oh, it's just a rod. No, it's not just a rod, baby. You know, somebody's crying and you have the answer. And to you, oh, I thought that, I thought that was common knowledge. Every, no, it's not common knowledge. Not everybody knows it. The fact that somebody's praying and crying out for it means that they didn't, she doesn't know it. And you know it. What you hold is not insignificant. Your rod is not unimportant. Don't think it's, it's of no value. Don't think it's too small. Don't think what you carry is insufficient. It's worthless. Don't think... That the information you know is pointless, is non-essential, it's minor. Don't think that what you do is irrelevant. Oh, it's just little, not worth mentioning. Of not, it's not. I don't. It's nothing worth bothering somebody about. The rod is worth reviewing. Review the rod in your hand. Review the little bit of oil that you have in you. Review the five loaves and the two fish that you have. And restore it. Use it. Because it is important to somebody else. Because it's worth it. 
because it's it's valuable to somebody because it's substantial to somebody because it's consequential to somebody it's meaningful and it is profitable for somebody don't discount yourself let's rise on our feet as we pray and stretch forth our hands rise up on your feet let us pray I want everybody in this place, those who are online, stretch forth your hands and stare at your hands. Stare at your hands. There is value in these hands. There is profit in these hands. These hands have the ability to save and to help others to be fruitful. Your hands have the ability to make a difference. In your hands are the solutions to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring peace, and to become agents of change for God. Ladies and gentlemen, as you're staring at your hands, Psalms 128 verse 2 says, When you fear God and you walk in obedience, you do everything God tells you to do. You will eat the fruits of your hands. Blessings and prosperities will be yours. Look at those hands. Keep those hands in front of you. What do you have in your hands that can bring deliverance? That can part the Red Sea, get somebody out of debt and feed a nation? What natural gifts do you have? What talents do you have? You, some of you have a voice. Use it. Some of you have access to knowledge. You have access to information. You have a passion. You have a network. You have ability. You have energy. You have zest for life. You have drive. You have experience. Use it. Those are deliverance for somebody else. Stop holding on to what you have. Stop holding on to what you have. Stop, stop belittling what you have. Stop looking down at what you have. That he can't help anybody. You can help somebody. Can you open up Proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 for me? Keep staring at those hands. Lift those hands up. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 says, Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to help them. In your hands is the ability to do good and to help if Moses had withheld, the Israelites would not have been delivered. If the boy with the five loaves of bread and two fish had withheld it, how would they have fed the thousands of people? And Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16 says, Do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Let me read that again. Hebrews 13 verse 16. Do not neglect doing good and sharing. For with such sacrifices, God is what? God is pleased. When Mordecai found out about Haman's plan to destroy the Jews, he approached Esther for help. But she was gripped with fear and thought she could not help. And Mordecai said to her in Esther chapter 4 verse 14, For if you remain silent at this time, Moses, if you don't rise up, relief and deliverance will come for the Jews. Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. God will never leave his people helpless. But you and your family and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Who knows that you are in this church for such a time as this. Who knows that you are in this network for such a time as this. Who knows that you are in this community for such a time as this. Because there is something in your hand that somebody else needs. There is salvation in your hands. There is deliverance in your hands. There is healing in your hands. There is power in your hands. And who knows that you have come to such information for such a time as this. Who knows that you have gone to school for, you know, and, and gathered all those knowledge for such a time as this. Who knows that you have gone through all of those experiences for such a time as this. Who knows if everything you've gone through 
Was God preparing you for ministry for such a time as this? What is in your hands? In your hands. In your hands. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. But guess what? If you don't use it, God will raise up somebody else. God will raise up somebody else because God will never leave his people helpless. What is in your hands? It's time to use it. It's time to use that rod. Stretch it out. Stretch out your gifts. Stretch out your talents. Stretch out. And let God use you to bless somebody's life. I want to pray for you. I want you to raise up your hands and say, God, I release these hands. I release these hands. I release these hands for you. I release my gifts and my talents. I release my abilities. I release my passion. I release my education, my knowledge, my information. I release my strength. I release everything that is in my hands for the work of the gospel. I release it, oh God. Use my hands for ministry. Use my hands to save souls. Use my hands to deliver people. Use my hands, oh God. Use everything you've put on the inside of me. Use my career. Use my position. Use everything you've given to me to make a difference in the lives of people I come in contact with. God, I surrender it all. I surrender it all. I surrender my rod. I surrender my little jar of oil. I surrender my five loaves and two fish for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering.